if you find your life getting a little bit more restricted, relationships being more stressed and strained, there's a good chance we're experiencing excessive anxiety or excessive anger. I like to call it the double A battery because they are very, very connected. Anger and anxiety by themselves are excellent. They're useful, they're adaptive in certain situations, not all the time though. So we wanna to talk today about when they become excessive, when they start to disrupt our lives and how we can actually resolve that, as well as a few tips and strategies to look at anger and anxiety a little differently, which calms our body in and of itself, and then a few strategies to help us express anger and anxiety to ourselves and to those people around us in a way that can build relationships, strengthen your mental fortitude and confidence, and really help us to have the most effective, satisfying relationships with other people. Where does excessive anger come from? Oftentimes it starts with a denial of self-concept. What on earth is a denial of self-concept? Well, how about denying the fact that you're an amazing human? You just got online, came into this YouTube video, looking for ways to improve your life. The denial of your true self-concept is a very common problem. Starting to walk around thinking we're not worthy, we're not good enough, is denial of who you are. I often say to people, nobody even knows how to make a hand. Look at how amazing you are. If I offered you a million dollars for your hands, would you give them to me? Most people say no, coming into the counseling office. No, I wouldn't do that. So we're richer than we think. You're amazing right out of the gate. And Unfortunately, denying your self-concept does get in the way of us feeling better about ourselves and can fuel anxiety then. How does it fuel anxiety? A preponderance, an obsession, overthinking about evidence that confirms we're not good enough. Difficulties, things we didn't do well, our failings even, or ants, automatic negative thoughts, will fuel fear. The world's a scary place, it's complex. When we're thinking we're not good enough and then dwelling on examples of life that didn't go well or situations that didn't go well, that will drag us down and start to fuel anxiety, which is heightened fear about our ability to make it in the world. Most of us don't like to sit with anxiety or sit with fear, and we don't see it as helpful. Imagine you run up to a cliff and your body didn't freeze filled with anxiety in one one hundredth of a millisecond. A healthy portion of anxiety is very useful. When you're driving down the road or riding your bike, you want to have a healthy level of fear or anxiety to keep you paying attention, to keep you safe. Thinking about anxiety as a healthy thing can help us not then flip right over into anger. Oftentimes, because we don't feel comfortable with anxiety and it's unsettling, it's also using extra energy, it's releasing cortisol, we can easily get angered. This is bull. I don't like this. I'm tired of this. This shouldn't be happening. It's easy to cover up anxiety with anger. And I often say it becomes the number one cover-up feeling, anger fueling anxiety. So what do we do about it then? It starts with valuing both. Imagine if somebody was really rude to you or one of your family members and you didn't have the ability to be angry. Imagine if there was a legitimate threat to your house and you didn't have the ability to be nervous. That actually gives us some energy, helps get the cortisol going, helps us with the fight or flight response, which is our best chance of saving our life. Thinking about anger and anxiety is valuable. Seeing how they're connected, we get angry a lot and are rude to friends and relatives or our employers. We start getting anxious that we might not have a job, we might not have friends, and our family members might not want to hang around us. Finding ways to calm the body first and foremost. You can check out the video on box breathing, guided imagery. We have a couple of videos on guided imagery, progressive muscle relaxation, and grounding exercises. We're doing a few videos on that today. That clears the mind up so that we can think about anger and anxiety a little more positively, as well as start to do things to express it better. Managing our face and tone, managing our posture. When we're really, really angry, might be better off to sit down and relax. Even a relaxed position can help the people you're angry with be more relaxed 
and possibly hear the message. Not blaming the person, but identifying the problem. Understanding that both people have a different perspective and the truth generally lies somewhere in the middle is a healthy perspective to adopt. Finding things to distract us, even momentarily, can be very helpful. So I might just hold on to my ring. I'm upset, I might just hold on to this and wiggle it around and help it to remind me. Relationships are never ending. It's a circle there, it's never ending. And it's important to work out difficulties. Finding creative strategies to calm yourself down. Some people will use tapping. Some people will use tapping exercises to calm the body down. We could even tap our toes right now and calm ourselves down just by distracting our conscious mind from the ruminating or obsessive thinking. You're not alone. We're all struggling with these matters of existence. As a younger person, I didn't realize that anxiety, the fear of losing someone, the fear of not doing well on earth was underneath it. I thought it was just anger and anger in and of itself. I used to refer to myself as an asshole, a jerk, an idiot, a loser for smoking cigarettes to the tune of 110, 120,000 insults a year. I didn't even know it was going on to that extent. No wonder it was hard to get away from. So to move away from something is very important for us to understand the roots. That anger and the anxiety about not being successful go together. And they were getting in the way of success. When anger and anxiety come up, observe how you feel and normalize it, validate it, and see how your expression changes. I encourage you to continue to work on yourself, build that mental fitness, spiritual fitness, physical fitness, so that you can have the most cherished experience here on earth most valued experience and a fun life that recognizes difficulties are a part of it. Thanks again. Hit subscribe if you want. And remember, take care out there.